It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Green Fly, Greenville Fly Boys General Manager, Caitlin Foster. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to work in professional sports? Yeah, so um, I, I got my start over um, in Bluefield when they were the Bluefield Orioles. And um, it was an unexpected position. I had actually just... Um, went in there for a summer job and then just in talking with the the general manager there um, he offered me an internship which I accepted and then um, I stayed there for a few years um, and then while I was there I also um, began um, coaching uh, volleyball at Bluefield State and then moved back to Florida for a little bit um, was out of sports for a while and then in 2015 I started at Roger Dean Stadium um, in Jupiter and I was there for a couple of years, and then in 2019, uh, came up um, and became the um, assistant general manager for the Cardinals, and then moved over here. So um, it's just one of those things of, I guess, I, I'm always very, uh, always been very sports oriented, um, and always kind of knew I wanted to work in sports. So um, didn't know what I wanted to do. My major was sports management, um, but once I got going in Bluefield, just kind of fell in love with it and decided that's what I wanted my career to be. Of course, what was it like to play volleyball for Bluefield College? Oh, it was a great experience. I had um, I had a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was something I it, uh, definitely miss. A couple of our interns here um, are uh, um, currently, they played volleyball at Tusculum, and, and now they're both um, doing, you know, assistant coaching and stuff. So, um, they, we were reminiscing about it the other day when you were a player, we were talking about preseason pain and all that stuff that you just knew was inevitable every year in August. Um, but it was, it was a great experience and I, I really, um, really enjoyed it and really miss, you know, miss playing on a team. What was your time like coaching for the Bluefield State College? It was good. It was definitely, um, it was a learning experience. Um, I was really young when I did it and um, the girls that I were coaching, um, one of them was actually older than me. So it was, it, that was uh, definitely a learning curve as well and an adjustment. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, but I will say I don't think coaching um, is something that's, it's not my thing. Um, I feel like it's, you know, having said that, even being, you know, in the GM position, you're still in a leadership role, but it's just like, it's a little bit different um, than coaching. So it was a great experience. Um, it taught me a lot and I learned a lot from it um, personally and professionally, um, but not something I'd probably repeat. What was the transition like from being a college head coach to now assistant general manager? Do you mean when, like, Sorry, um, you mean like when I, I did both of those at the same time. So um, like I was, I would, uh, I would go to uh, our first practice of the day and then I would go to work at the Orioles. And then during the game, I would leave and have my other practice. Um, and then I would go back to the stadium and button up things there and just kind of repeated that for the first several weeks of the preseason um, while everything was going on simultaneously. So I actually did both of those at the same time. What was that balance like from being a coach and a general manager, assistant general manager? Um, it was interesting because you just have to. I had to shift gears um, kind of quick, like obviously the schools aren't super far apart, which I mean was a good thing, but you know, like you're, you're at, unfortunately it's like you're at practice while your game is going on. So as the AGM, you know, it's like my GM was obviously really willing to work with me, but it was like, I'm trying to focus on practice while simultaneously worried about things I might be missing at the game. I'm at practice and people are texting me things that they need, um, you know, and then it, it was, it was stressful. It was, you know, it, it was nice. Like I, I enjoy being really busy. So that part was nice. Um, but the stress of it was, it was 
once you once I got into a groove with it, it was okay. But it finding the balance was was very tough because you know at practice you're trying to focus on the team. And then you're thinking about the game, but then I go back to the game and worried maybe I was too focused on the game or, you know, the game and not worried enough about practice. So um, it, it worked out fine mentally. Um, it, it was it was OK, but it was a little tough because, like I said, you're trying to make sure that you're not missing things at both or having regrets that maybe you should have been a little more focused on one rather than the other. So that that part was pretty tough to, to find that. What did you accomplish as assistant general manager for the Bluefield baseball? Um, learned a lot. Like I kind of um, fell into that role. Like my first year, like I said, like I was an intern. Um, and then the next year, um, Bluefield is a very hands-on um, facility because sometimes you have like bigger staffs, um, but Bluefield is, you know, there's the GM that's here year round. And other than that, that's it. Um, like, even though I was, you know, technically the assist, not technically the assistant general manager, I didn't work all year round. Um, that's where I kind of got started in sales, made my first couple of sales there. Um, but that's very, it's a very operationally heavy um, facility. So that kind of gave me a lot of, you know, operations experience. Um, that was very beneficial for me. What was it like to work for the with? What was your time like whenever you worked for the stadium of Chevrolet? Oh, um, so Roger Dean um, Stadium, that was, you know, that was a great time. It's, you know, that's definitely um, a grind. It's, you know, it's a spring trip. So um, that was, you know, that's learning, you know, starting in February, you're working, um, you know, 50 something days in a row. Um, you know, nine to five every day working the, the spring training games. And then, you know, in the, uh, the minor league season goes from April to September and it's a dual team facility. So it's very much a grind. Um, I absolutely enjoyed my time there. Um, I'm a Florida kid, so I love living there. Um, but it's definitely, um, you know, this kind of level, I'm not saying I wouldn't ever do that again, but you know, for everybody, like you have different seasons in your life. And now that, you know, um, I'm married and stuff, like, I feel like this type of thing, um, obviously I wouldn't be, you know, opposed to going to a higher level, but for right now, um, this kind of fits my personal and professional goals. So I did learn a lot and it was an absolutely invaluable experience. What was your time like with the Johnson City Cardinals as the assistant general manager? It was very good. Um, I enjoyed it over there. It was, you know, I was there for a year. Um, I met there then general manager Zach um, because of Roger Dean Stadium, where uh, I worked um, for, you know, obviously partially the Palm Beach Cardinals as well as the Jupiter Hammerheads. And he's obviously was at the time a Cardinals affiliate. So that's how he and I got connected. Um, and then I came up and I was there for a year. Um, and it was a great experience. I mean, um, our company um, that owns now the now Flyboys also owns the team in Johnson City, um, as well as, um, you know, the Kingsport team and the Elizabethan team. Um, but it was a great experience. It was a wonderful way to get my foot back in the door. Learned so much because that's a very another very, um, very operation heavy stadium requires a lot of groundwork um it's an older stadium so it's got its nice little kinks and quirks um but that was a great experience um and it really helped me it was a great way to get back into baseball what was the transition like from you for going from being an assistant general manager to a general manager for the greenville Flyboys? it was very seamless um having you know like i said having to work it's you know owned by the same company um the teams are only 45 minutes apart. So it was a great, you know, it was an easy transition. Um, came over here, got started, obviously didn't get very far. Um, about a month, a little over a month after I got started, um, 
started working from home because of, uh, you know, COVID and stuff like that. So my first year um, kind of came to a halt just as it got started. Um, but we, you know, obviously stuck with it um, through everything. Our company did an amazing job of keeping us in the loop, trying to, you know, communicate with us about everything that may or may not be going on and all that stuff. Um, so that part was actually pretty easy. I wasn't always entirely sure that I was ready to be um, in the GM position, but, um, you know, my boss, um, his name's Jeremy Bowler. He's always so encouraging, um, you know, anytime, and, and we're all very close knit, like the call that I just missed was from the GM um, over the new GM in Johnson City. Um, so we're all very close knit and it's, you know, anytime you need anything, you can pick up the phone and call someone. So it's always an easy transition in this company to go and they want you to grow. So they make it very easy to do that. So it was very seamless to come over here and, and get started. And, you know, we've been doing stadium setup. We're now on day three this week. So um, just getting ready for everything is a nice change. Um, this stadium's not as operationally heavy because obviously it's a newer ballpark and it's, you know, beautiful facility. So it, uh, it was all in all, it was just an easy transition to get over here. What is the day in the life and roles and responsibility as general manager of a minor league team? Well, no day is the same. Um, in the off season, a lot of the days are the same. It's, you know, you get to come in and you're just communicating with everybody. You're reaching out, making sure that, you know, everybody had their needs met, like your sponsors, your season ticket holders, you're getting feedback on the season. Um, so it's the way I view it is more of like, when you start to get in season, no day today is the day to day is the same. Monday here was interns first day. So you had intern orientation and then you started stadium setup. We were here until eight o'clock getting the stadium ready. Um, today is painting, hanging some signs, moving some chairs. Um, tomorrow is cleaning the visitor clubhouse. Um, and of course nothing ever goes as planned. So, you know, we go to pressure wash and the pressure wash won't start. Um, you know, you're going to move stuff and wheels fall off. So it's just, you know, um, day to day is just basically one of the most um, important things you can probably learn, um, in this position or any position is just take things as they come at you and just understand, like, you're going to try to have a plan for the day, but you have to be very realistic and understand that things are going to go wrong that you did not intend on going wrong. You just have to roll with it and get it done um, as best you can. Um, off season day today is just, like I said, checking in, making sure everybody had a great year. Um, then, you know, the sponsorship sales kind of start and you start reaching out to your partners, see what you can improve on and all of that stuff. So it just kind of depends on uh, what day you are at in your season is depending on what's getting thrown at you. Of course, as the season starts up, what are some game day traditions that you have implemented? Um, we don't have any yet um, because it we didn't have a season in 2020. So um, we're still working on those. Um, so for right now, especially with it being the new team, um, you know, we're going to do our best to, to do some unique things um, for here for, you know, this season and future seasons. Um, but that is yet to be determined. What is the game day atmosphere going to look like this season? It's going to be the same. Um, we're is it has been uh, previously. We're allowed to operate at 100% capacity, which is what we're going to do. Um, obviously, we want everyone to be comfortable, but we are going to have fireworks. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have a jersey auction. We're going to have you know the the atmosphere is going to be what it was. It's going to feel like minor league baseball. That's the goal. Um, the only difference is going to be the players on the field are going to be a little bit younger, but you get to see them at the, you know, the very start of their careers, um, just like you got to in rookie ball, except even earlier in their careers, because, you know, these are freshmen and sophomores in college. Um, I think it's going to be very competitive ball. Um, not to say unlike years past, but, you know, given the option, I always love to watch college sports, you know, over professional sports. So um, I think it's going to be great ball. And then obviously as a staff, we are going to do our best to make sure that it's a fun environment as well. Of course, are y'all a minor league team affiliated with a major league or are y'all independent? 
technically we're independent. Um, we are backed um, and affiliate. We're the only team uh, or the only league that's directly affiliated with Major League Baseball. The other ones have like minor partnerships with them, um, but ours is a direct affiliation um, that's also helped um, by USA Baseballs doing all of our recruiting. Who are some of the teams that you play in this upcoming year? Um, we'll play all the other Appalachian League teams that we have in the past. Um, you know, Elizabethan, Johnson City, um, Bristol, Kingsport, um, over here in the West. And then in the East, you have Bluefield, um, Princeton, Pulaski, Burlington, and I think I'm forgetting one. Feel bad for whoever I just forgot, but that might have actually been all of them. <laughs> of course, what are your, some of your future plans when you do plan on facing these opponents? Um, I mean, we don't really have, are you talking like on the field or? Just like getting back to normalcy. Are you talking about like them on the field? Yes. Some of your future plans when it comes to this upcoming year and future years. Um, I'm not sure. I'll say that it's, uh, you know, I'm definitely just going to obviously, you know, looking forward to this year. Um, I like to take things, you know, kind of season by season. So, um, you know, we'll take a, we'll take a look at this season and, and see what it, what it holds. And then for anything after that, you know, we will, uh, we'll go from there. What advice would you give my fans looking to become general managers in the minor league and independent ball? What was your, was your question um, advice for people wanting to work in professional sports? Yes. With it, um, I will say, you know, like um, a lot of people see the internships and they are hard. Um, you know, like our, our operations guys have been out here every day getting an early start, staying late when needed. Um, you know, they are right now they're painting and then they have to go pressure wash and then they have to you know get up on a ladder and clean lights and then you know our on-field intern she's in there prepping music and game scripts and doing some marketing and social media and the ticket you know the ticket people um our ticket interns you know they're on the phones um and then on game days it's you know pulling tarp and staying late because you have to blow out the stadium and all of that and it's not you know um I feel unfortunately like a lot of people have a misconception that, you know, we just show up and we open the gates and the stadium's ready. And that's not, um, that's not even remotely the case at all. It takes a lot um, to get these stadiums ready. It's a very personal thing, um, you know, cause you want to take a lot of pride in, in you know, in, in a sense of ownership over your facility and your field. So it takes a lot to get ready and internships are tough. Um, and there's also, you know, it's like, you have to do an internship. I was an intern. My AGM, he was an intern. Um, everybody starts somewhere. And unfortunately, a lot of people, I, I'll be totally honest, a lot of people in this day and age just want to skip the process. And they want to go straight from, um, you know, they want to go from not even an intern. They want to go to from here to here. And it's like, you know, you, you need to, there's reasons that there's a ladder because there's a lot to learn. Um, you know, for a lot of GMs, it's very corporate sales heavy. You have to have a lot of corporate sales experience. So, and it doesn't come naturally to everybody. So it's hard to just jump in those roles. So um, my advice is just, you know, obviously take an internship or two if you need to, um, because operation sounds great, but then everyone realizes that operations doesn't mean what you think it means operations is actually taking out the trash it's pressure washing the stadium it's um you know getting uh co2 deliveries for your coke machine it's getting your propane for your grill it's doing it's doing a lot of things like that um that you have to do and then ticket sales is making 50 calls a day um you know answering phones a lot and then you know getting on field stuff you have to prep your game script every day you have to write the game script you there's there's a lot that goes into putting these games on and um 
don't skip internships because they're not fun. Um, there's things I do as a general manager that are not fun. Um, I'm in t-shirt and a shorts and shorts because after this call, I'm about to go outside and for Tennessee, it's kind of warm out. It's in the eighties. Um, and I have to go hang some new sweet signs. And then after that, um, I have to start cleaning. So, you know, it's, um, you never escape it and, you know, just give it a try. And if you find out that that's what you want to do, then absolutely stick with it. But hand in hand with that is just don't think that you know it all. Um, there are things that I still learn from my boss every day that I am thankful for that he's willing to share that knowledge with me. Um, so just be willing to put in the work um, and, and learn what you need to learn and be willing to move up. Don't expect it just to be handed to you. This is going to be my 11th year in some form of um, you know, sports industry, um, obviously, you know, the majority of it's in baseball, um, but just be willing to learn and be willing to put in the work um, and stick with it. Don't, don't give up. Not, it's not all glory. It's not all, you know, all of that. There's things that, that happen every day that you just have to deal with to get ready and just be willing to do that. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Greenville Fly Boys? Yeah, um, I'm on, um, I'm personally on social media. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, you just have to type in uh, Catherine Foster and that should pop up. And um, I'm always happy to connect with anybody, you know, via LinkedIn. All of our Greenville Flyboys is uh, just um, at G Flyboys. That's on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So all of those are the same. So if you type that in, uh, you should find all that. Um, but yeah, I can be, you know, anybody can find me on LinkedIn. Um, like I said, it's under Kat Foster or Catherine Foster, um, you know, and I'll connect and anybody that ever has any questions, um, I always do my best to, you know, respond and, and help out um, as best as I can. Thank you again, Catherine Foster, for your interview and best of luck as general manager in this upcoming season with the Greenville Flyboys. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate your time. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Catherine Foster, for your interview, and best of luck. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.